Madam Deputy Speaker, I seek leave of the House to bring in a bill to prohibit the promotion of social transition practices in schools, to require schools to inform parents if their child has indicated an intention to pursue or has commenced social transition, to provide for a right for parents to access information about lessons in schools, to make provision about the teaching of the concept of gender identity in schools and for connected purposes. Madam Deputy Speaker, the issue I bring to the House today needs a bill, the very necessity of which is both grotesque and revealing of an absurdity, that turning a blind eye to the real-world effects of what seemingly good-faith legislation has had on our education system, schools and society as a whole. So we may all be clear on what the proposed bill refers, let me start by defining the terms mentioned. Gender identity is the theory that, though we may be biologically male or female, the more important characteristic is, that we, is what we actually feel like on the inside. Social transitioning is the conscious act of self-rejection of our biological reality. Cases of this happening used to be one of the clearest examples we've ever had of an exception that proves the rule. I'm sickened to say that under all our noses, Members of society, either politically or educationally tasked with helping bring up our children, have turned raising the next generation into a science experiment with consequences that break my heart. In schools today, it's rapidly becoming taught as a normal and common occurrence not to feel at home in our own bodies. And that the reason we feel that way is likely to be because we are, as a person, simply trapped in the body of the opposite sex. In some schools, Madam Deputy Speaker, one in 15 children now identify as something different from their actual biological sex. Madam Deputy Speaker, the exceptions that pr prove the rule are now becoming the rule. We've started to blur the lines of basic reality and turned what was already an extremely complex world for children to get to grips with into a more complex one. To paraphrase Douglas Murray, there is just about nothing more formative to our grip on reality than the realities of sex. The first, most basic, most instinctive thing we become aware of when we're either growing up or even meeting someone new is simply that there are boys and there are girls. By dismantling this, we dismantle the world and pull out a foundational block of society. Who knows where the Jenga tower may fall? But one thing is certain, the tower will fall and we should all be ashamed that we would doom our children to such a fate. Social transition practices in school have now become the norm in every classroom in the country. They are promoted as a normal and healthy response to natural feelings children experience around a difficult period we used to just call growing up. There is not a single child in our schools today who has not been exposed to it. They include the policing of language by mandating the use of a child's preferred pronouns, referring to a boy as she or her instead of he or him or vice versa, the use of body alterations to reflect their transition to the opposite sex, which primarily takes the form of surgical castration for boys, double mastectomies for girls, Frankenstein-esque genitalia being created from grafts of skin, and drugs to pause or halt puberty taking place. Teachers, students, even parents who don't oblige are punished and ostracised. In Canada, Madam Deputy Speaker, calling a child by their wrong pronoun is already a crime. The common consensus is that this gender-based ideology came about from adolescents who are more inclined to adopt the so-called progressive liberal values. But this, Madam Deputy Speaker, couldn't be further from the truth. The origins of gender ideology came about from rogue academics of the 20th century who have since been discredited laying the groundwork for future socialist thinkers to start making more and more wild claims about the nature of our societies. George Bernard Shaw was one of those who opened Pandora's box by coining anti-family rhetoric and the rejection of societal gender norms. In 1928, Shaw wrote, and I quote, the social creed must be imposed on us when we are children. It is quite easy to give people a second nature, however unnatural, if you catch them early enough. Chilling words, Madam Deputy Speaker, yet here we are, voluntarily following his playbook. This has not come from our children spending more and more time in the echo chamber of social media. It has been clinically and systematically imposed on them from the top down. Gender ideology is a political ideology, 
one that is being effectively promoted in schools and therefore constitutes political indoctrination, which under section 406 of the Education Act is strictly prohibited. Any who would argue that the gender identity is protected by the Equality Act of 2010 and therefore can be sussed in schools would have grossly misinterpreted the Equality Act as gender identity is not, is not a protected characteristic. There is a reason we are careful what topics we broach and teach children at young ages. Why have we forgotten this? And if it were at all possible, Madam Deputy Speaker, it gets much worse. The public are rightly shocked when they learn just how graphic and extensive sex education lessons have become in our schools. Five-year-olds are being taught to identify different genitalia in class. Nowhere in the guidance on sex education lessons does the Department of Education discuss teaching nine-year-old children about masturbation or witnessing, witnessing dolls simulate sex acts. Eleven to twelve-year-olds being taught that they can feel pleasure from anal or oral sex does this depravity know no bounds? Not only are these uh, topics being broached, but they're also being encouraging prepubescent children to explore their own bodies in this manner. This borders on, the, on criminality. When, have, when adults are suggesting that children as young as eight should engage in adult activities, we have a duty to safeguard our children and preserve their innocence, protect them from the complexities of adult life until they reach an appropriate age where they are mature enough to engage with topics and fully understand them. What is happening in our schools, Madam Deputy Speaker, is unacceptable and there is a need for immediate action. Classrooms should be a safe harbour. Inclusivity has become a double-edged sword cutting through the very fabric of childhood. Every child has the right to innocence and immunity from the sexual perversions of adults. When teaching sex education, topics where a bridge should stand between parents and teachers, a barricade has formed. Parents have been left in the dark and even actively blocked from seeing the material taught to their own children. We must act now and hope that the damage already done is not going to be too long-lasting. The bill I propose today will prop up existing legislation aimed at protecting our children and put an end to this dark chapter. Social transition in children will be forbidden. The promotion of social transitioning and the discussion of social transitioning practices will be prohibited from appearing on any aspect of a school curriculum. Local authorities governing bodies or head teachers shall immediately inform parents or carers of any child that indicates intent to socially transition or who has com commenced the process of socially transitioning. Moreover, upon informing the parents of a child who has considered socially transitioning, the relevant safeguarding policy shall be adhered to and the relevant safeguarding leads shall be notified. Parents will be entitled to the right to consultation, to withdraw their child, children from sex education and the right to have access to the materials used as part of that sexual education. And schools will only be allowed to use published, citable resources which are reliably available for public and regulatory scrutiny. The Bill will uphold and reinforce the provisions laid out in the Education Act of 1996 and will forbid the promotion of gender identity. Where gender identity is taught, it will be taught alongside opposing views to allow for a fair presentation of political beliefs. <coughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, RSC and PSHE lessons were bought into to sensibly and safely inform our children on necessary topics to keep them safe from harm. Let's get a grip of the legislation and deliver on the original purpose intended. Madam Deputy Speaker, our children are not guinea pigs. It's high time this House took charge and stopped allowing ideologies passed down from mad scientists which treat them as such. My proposed bill will protect children, reassure parents and offer certainty to teachers Madam Mr. Speaker, I wish with all my heart this bill was not necessary, but it is needed and it's desperately needed.